The 2025 edition of NFPA 13, Chapters 10 through 14, outlines sprinkler coverage and spacing requirements tailored to each sprinkler type. While the standard defines the values, designers often apply them using individual methods. In this video, we'll explore practical techniques for achieving uniform sprinkler placement, focusing specifically on upright and pendant sprinklers. The first step in locating sprinklers begins with determining how many are needed. To do this, we first calculate the total area of the room. Then, we divide that area by the maximum coverage allowed for each sprinkler head, as defined by the NFPA standards. This gives us the minimum number of sprinklers required for adequate protection. Let's walk through an example to see how we calculate the minimum number of sprinklers required. We consider a room measuring 100 by 70 feet, featuring a flat horizontal ceiling in an ordinary hazard occupancy classification. The selected sprinkler type is standard spray. According to Table 10, 2421B, the maximum coverage area per sprinkler is 130 square feet, with a maximum spacing of 15 feet. The room's dimensions are 100 by 70 feet, giving a total area of 7,000 square feet. Dividing that by 130 gives approximately 53.8. If the result isn't a whole number, we round it up. Partial sprinklers aren't an option in fire protection design. Coming up, we'll show how to arrange the required number of sprinklers while following NFPA 13 spacing guidelines. The first method we examine for locating sprinklers based on spacing requirements involves placing them according to the maximum allowable spacing along the room's length. This method includes three steps. First, we determine the minimum number of sprinklers required to cover the room length. This is done by dividing the total length by the maximum spacing permitted by NFPA 13. Second, we find the number needed across the width by dividing the total sprinklers required for the entire room by the number positioned along the length. This ensures full coverage across the width. Finally, we calculate the exact spacing along both the length and width using the numbers derived from the previous steps. Let's apply the procedure to our example. To determine the minimum number of sprinklers needed along the room's length, we divide the total length by the maximum spacing allowed by NFPA 13. In this case, the room measures 100 feet and the maximum spacing is 15 feet. Dividing these gives 6.67. Since partial sprinklers aren't an option in fire protection design, we round up, meaning we'll need seven sprinklers along the length. In the second step, we determine the number of sprinklers needed across the room's width. To do this, we divide 54, the total number of sprinklers required for the entire room, by 7, which is the number positioned along the length. The result is 7.71. We round up to 8 heads along the width. Using this method, based on the specific dimensions in this example, we calculate a total of 56 sprinklers, which is two more than the previously determined minimum. With the number of sprinklers determined along both the length and width, we can now calculate the spacing needed for uniform placement. To find the spacing along the room's length, we divide the total length of 100 feet by the number of sprinklers, which is 7. By rounding to two decimal places, this gives 14.28 feet spacing between sprinklers. The distance from the wall to the first sprinkler is half of that, ensuring even distribution across the room. To calculate the spacing along the width, we use the same method. Divide the room's width, which is 70 feet, by the number of sprinklers, that's 8. This gives a spacing of 8.75 feet between each sprinkler. To find the distance from the wall to the first sprinkler, take half of that value. Now we have all the necessary data to locate the sprinklers, including how many are required across the length and width of the room, as well as their spacing. 
with this information, laying out the sprinkler system becomes a straightforward task. To locate the first sprinkler, we begin at one corner of the room and draw parallel lines along the length and width, each set at a distance equal to half the calculated spacing. The point where these two lines intersect marks the position of the first sprinkler. From there, we copy this sprinkler using the calculated spacing along both directions. By continuing this pattern, we can place all the required sprinklers uniformly across the space. The second method for locating sprinklers is similar to the first. However, this time we begin by placing them using the maximum spacing allowed along the width of the room. Let's review this method using the same example as before. In the first step, we calculate the minimum number of sprinklers required along the room's width. This is done by dividing the total width by the maximum spacing allowed under NFPA 13. In our example, dividing 70 by 15 gives approximately 4.6, which we round up to 5 sprinklers. In the second step, we calculate the minimum number of sprinklers required along the room's length. We do this by dividing the total number of sprinklers required for the entire room by the number placed along the width. In this example, dividing 54 by 5 gives 10.8. We round up to 11 sprinklers. Using this method and the specific dimensions of our room, we calculated a total of 55 sprinklers to fully protect the space. That's one fewer than the first method, and just one more than the minimum required by NFPA 13 standards. Now it's time to determine the spacing between sprinklers and their distance from the walls. We'll follow the same procedure used in the first method. After calculating the number of sprinklers along the room's length and width, as well as their spacing and the minimum distance from the walls, we begin placing the sprinklers starting from one corner, just as we did in the first method. In the third method, we locate the sprinklers based on the ratio between the room's length and width. For example, if the length is twice the width, we aim to position twice as many sprinklers along the length as we do across the width. The goal is to distribute the sprinklers proportionally to the room's dimensions. Let's review this method using our example. First, we define L as the number of sprinklers along the length and W as the number along the width. Given the room dimensions, 100 feet in length and 70 feet in width, we know that the width is 0.7 times the length. We also know that multiplying L by W should equal 54, the total number of sprinklers required. By replacing W with 0.7 times L and solving the equation, we find that L is 9 sprinklers. The remaining steps are the same as in the previous two methods. First, we determine how many sprinklers are needed across the width by dividing the total number of required sprinklers by the number placed along the length. Next, we calculate the spacing between sprinklers and the distance from the walls along both directions. Finally, we begin placing the sprinklers on the layout, starting from one corner and following a grid based on the calculated spacing. As shown, the total number of calculated sprinklers matches the minimum required in this method. With the given room dimensions, this approach results in the optimal number of sprinklers for full coverage. The final method presented in the video is quite similar to the third. In this approach, the value of L is defined in relation to W, where L equals 1.43 times W. By replacing L and solving the equation, we find that W equals 7 sprinklers. The remaining steps are the same as in the previous methods. Determine how many sprinklers are needed across the length by dividing the total number of sprinklers by the number placed along the width. Calculate spacing and distance from the walls along both directions. Finally, position the sprinklers in the layout starting from a corner and maintaining consistent spacing. 
We reviewed four methods for locating sprinklers in this video. As mentioned earlier, many other approaches exist and each designer may apply their own technique. It's also important, in any method applied, to check the minimum spacing between sprinklers to avoid cold soldering and the minimum distance from walls to prevent placing sprinklers in dead air spaces. Most fire sprinkler software includes tools for placing sprinklers uniformly across a layout. In this section, we'll review the Sprinkler Arrange feature in NSV CAD. The room dimensions are displayed on the layout. We'll use standard spray sprinklers and assume the occupancies fall under the ordinary hazard classification. Once the application is launched, a window appears allowing us to choose the sprinkler type spacing and coverage based on the project specifications. To define the room, we simply select two corner points. The software then presents several layout options, showing the number of required sprinklers and their spacing, sorted from lowest to highest. After selecting a preferred option, the sprinklers are automatically placed within the room, if the sprinkler type and hazard classification remain unchanged, we simply select the room and choose a preferred sprinkler layout option. I hope you find this video helpful. You can download the software from nsvsoft.net 